In this video, we're going to discuss mass spectrometry. Now, mass spectrometry is one of the most uh, popular techniques in chemistry. Uh, in fact, if you're very familiar with forensic science shows, they use this technique a lot for identifying different compounds in samples that they get from crime scenes, right? In fact, the, the device that they use looks very similar to this in this picture. Now, this isn't just a traditional mass spec. This is actually what's known as a gas chromatograph. Mass spectrometer. Right, or otherwise known as by its initials as GCMS. So we usually refer to this as a GCMS. Um, basically, the idea behind this is that both of these techniques together uh, give you a very acute picture of molecular behavior when you're trying to identify a compound, right? So it's very unlikely that that two molecules that are different would behave the same in both a gas chromatograph and a mass spectrometer, right? But this is a very traditional chemistry technique. If you've ever spent any time in a chemistry lab, you've definitely seen one of these. So, um, so you've probably seen this before, uh, potentially. If not, you might have seen this on, like I said, some TV shows, very popular technique for any show that's centered around chemistry. But specifically, what I want to focus in on is the mass spectrometer piece, right? So just this part, the mass spectrometer, because we discussed it in a previous video, and it's very useful in determining the different masses of isotopes. Uh, it's very useful for other applications as well. So I don't want to make you make it seem like this technique is a one trick pony. Uh, it does a lot, but um, it's very useful for uh, I determining isotopic uh, relative isotopic masses uh, and abundances in samples. So let's talk about what's going on here. So this figure at the bottom is a, is a, a, a diagram that shows uh, the mass spec. Now, you basically want to focus your attention here as the starting point, right? So this is basically where we're starting. And we're going to use carbon as an example since that was the, the atom that we looked at in the previous video. But basically, this is the beginning of the mass spec journey. So you begin with your sample. And the first thing that happens to your sample is that it's ionized. So let's, let's kind of go through the steps of the mass spec. So the steps of mass spec. The first step here is that your sample is ionized, right? So the sample is ionized. And then it's bent by this injector magnet. So first you're, you, you input your carbon sample. Let's say we have a, a sample of carbon. We put it in a mass spec, it's ionized. Those ions get bent by this injector magnet, injection magnet, right? So it's bent by the injection magnet. And at this bending process, you really kind of have control over which isotopes you're, you're looking for. So you can, you know, kind of tune this injection magnet a little bit to really uh, suss out what you're really looking for in your sample. So the injection magnet bends the ions, uh, the ionized sample into an accelerator, right? At which point the accelerator does what it, it says it does. It accelerates the ions through this path, right? So your ions are accelerated. So the second step is the ions are accelerated. Right. And I should say when you when you first have this ion stream, right, this is an ion stream of electrically charged um, uh, atoms. So they're, they're they're given an additional electron. Right. In this ionization process. So they're negatively charged. Then when they hit the acceler accelerator, they hit what's known as the stripper. And what the stripper does is actually turns these into positively charged ions. So the accelerator. So the ions are accelerated and positively charged
right? So they're accelerated through the mass spec, through this path, and they're positively charged. Now the final step, right? So we're, we're really looking at, you know, this being the first beginning, then step two, you're looking at ions being accelerated through. Now the last few steps, what happens uh, is it interacts with this focusing magnet, right? So this focusing magnet is going to again change the path of your ions, right? So they hit the focusing magnet. So focusing magnet changes path of ions. Right, and then the last step is that the ions are detected, right? So last step is the ions are detected. Right, and what you see here is that you see the three different isotopes of carbon, right? You see carbon 14, you see carbon 13, and you see carbon 12, right? So we have all of the different carbon isotopes are going to be uniquely identified by the detector. How does it do that? Well, basically what it does is it kind of estimates or it, it measures the energy lost by each one of these different isotopes and is basically able to back out the positive charge uh, relative in each one of those atoms. So you can get uh, the number of protons, neutrons, right? You get the, the relative masses for each one of these, right? Also, their paths are going to be differently affected by the focusing magnet based on how heavy they are, right? You can obviously um, interpret that for a smaller ion, right? Its, its path is going to be more greatly affected by this focusing magnet, whereas something that's heavier, its path may be less affected. So there's multiple things that this, uh, that the detector for mass spec is doing in order to back out the mass. But those are the essential steps of mass spectrometry. And this is a, a very, you useful and very popular technique in chemistry that as a student of chemistry, you should be familiar with with how it works on at least the surface level.